One of the questions I always get is, aside from cleaning my chain, should I be lubricating other parts of the bicycle? How should I keep it clean? So here's what I do. Let's start with the frame. This frame has actually been waxed once before with a simple paste wax, and it really helps it keep pretty clean. But in the interim, you're going to pick up a lot of dust and stuff, so I have a, a favorite product I use, which is Lemon Pledge. This stuff has been around forever. And I was first introduced to it back in the 1980s when we were making hand-built frames here in Rochester. Uh, the painter who painted with DuPont Emron at the time, I think, was addicted to Lemon Pledge. He used Lemon Pledge a lot to clean bikes. And I can understand why. It really leaves a nice, smooth finish on the bike, cleans it up really well, and it smells great to boot. And, and it is important to keep this clean. You know, you can notice a lot of things when you're cleaning a bike. You can check little things like these areas around the welds to make sure there are no cracks appearing uh, or you're going to have a problem. Have you got a scratch maybe you didn't notice in the frame that needs to be touched up? If there's a lot of dirt on it, you may not pick up on stuff like that. And another reason is the electrolyte drinks that we all carry in here often have lots of sugar in them. And they do tend to dribble and then they, they find their way right down the underside into the bottom bracket and they start to kind of junk stuff up down here. I can actually feel little droplets here. Yeah, I'll put some spit on my fingers and see if I can get rid of them that way. That'll help dissolve them. I don't think Lemon Pledge can do that. Okay, there they go. That was pretty disgusting, but it's my bike. I can do what I want. All right, so you do want to keep the frame clean. And I would say do that about every 300 miles or so. If you're riding in a place that's pretty dry or has a lot of dust, you'd be amazed at how quickly this frame can get dusty. Um, there's some other things you should look at in terms of lubrication, and that, and that is the derailleur, front and rear, and also just some very temp simple tire care, and uh, let's talk about that. Let's start with lubrication for the front derailleur. Really, all you have to worry about in the front derailleur is oiling the pivot points. If you don't know where the pivot points are, they're in this area. One of the easy ways to find them is just to move the derailleur back and forth with the shift lever. It's pivoting here, it's pivoting here, there's some pivoting going on down there. So all I want to do is just add a little bit of oil. Now, I usually use a product, something like um, this Phil Tenacious Oil, which has been around forever. And I've got it in one of these little oilers that has this neat little kind of needle application to it. So I'm just going to put some right in there. We've got a pivot point down there. I'm just squeezing some right in there. Here's one back here. Let's go after that one. Got some on the back side here too. Don't forget those. Go around the back here, put a little bit in there. Now, after you're done with this, what you should do is just take a paper towel and dab off any of the excess because oil tends to attract dirt. Dirt is what causes wear and tear. So we want to get rid of that the best we can. All right, now let's move on to the rear derailleur and take a look at that. Here's the rear derailleur, and again, an easy way to find the pivot points is just to shift it back and forth, but you can see them pretty obviously here. They're right around here where this body attaches here. They're also in here. There's some at the back side here and some at the back side there. So same thing, just dab in a little bit of this oil. You don't want to put a whole lot in there, just get a little bit in. might want to shift things after you're done because just moving that derailleur back and forth will help this oil penetrate. Getting into the back side can be a little bit tricky. And then when you're done, again, wipe off the excess so that you don't have a bunch of gup here to attract a lot of dirt and cause more wear and tear. And that takes care of the rear derailleur. Here's another thing to clean when you're working on a bike, and that is the rims and believe it or not the tire. I just take a damp sponge like this, turn the wheel, go around, get all this gunk off the rim. I want to make sure the sponge is just damp. I don't want to leave any residue on here to cause problems for the, uh, for the brake shoes. Go around and do the same thing on the other side. And then what I do too is I also dampen the tire like this. And the reason I'm doing this, I mean, it looks like it's a really grotty thing to do. Why would you want to do that? is because I can look now at the surface of this tire very clearly and see if there are any nicks in it, if I picked up a shard of glass, a thorn, something like that, 
find the problem before it happens. Just go around and clean everything up. I don't think you can see this on this camera, but one of the things I just uncovered here were the instructions on the inflation pressure for this tire. This tire is 80 to 100, 85, I'm sorry, 85 to 115 PSI. Uh, this is a really good thing to know. People always say, how much pressure should I put on my tire? Unless it's something but an absolute piece of junk tire, it's going to have that written on there somewhere. You just have to find it. Usually it's not in great big white letters like this is. It's just embossed. You can feel it sometimes before you see it. So get that cleaned up. Give your spokes a little cleaning like this. Clean out in between here. Get all this stuff done. Remember, go around the backside and do the same thing. Your bike will like you for this.